Welcome to PicoBite, your new monthly series to aid you in your quest to understand the powerful PicoScope software and all our test and measurement equipment. Yes! <laughs> right, let's go home. <laughs> Welcome to PicoBite, your new monthly series to aid you in your quest to understand the powerful PicoScope software and all our test and measurement equipment. Every month we'll be providing you with our top tip on our handy software feature or a helpful how-to topic of a common interest. In this month's PicoBite we're going to be giving you a quick overview of the PicoScope 7 early access user interface and get you up to speed with our latest software. Once you've got your scope plugged into your PC and you've launched PicoScope 7 software for the first time, it'll look like this. At the top, you'll see this big red and green button. This is your start-stop button to enable you to start capturing. Moving down the left side, we have our selection of lozenges. We call them this because it sounds cooler than saying throat sweet shaped boxes. Try saying that after a long night of polishing your probes. These lozenges are options which will change depending on the scope you have attached. That bit's important. With all the lozenges, you can click them to access your configuration. If we click the channel, you'll get your probe configuration and your channel display settings. The majority of them have plus and minus buttons which map to the most commonly used setting. For example, the buttons here will change a voltage scale on the selected channel. On the MSO peak scope, such as the 5444 MSO, you'll have a series of digital channels. These are for viewing up to 16 digital signals simultaneously. Once your digital channels are enabled, the plus and minus buttons on these will change your voltage threshold for a high or a low signal. Useful if your high voltage is lower than the default 1.5 volts. The signal generation lozenge is for outputting a waveform from the AWG port on the front or back of the peak scope. You can either use the built-in repeating waveforms or create your own arbitrary waveform to generate. We'll go into more detail of the signal generation in a later episode of PicoBite. On the left-hand side lozenges, you have one of your tool parks. This section has all your favorite tools such as serial decoding, rulers, and your math channels. By pressing more, you can view additional tools and add them to your favorites. Along the top section of PicoScope 7 interface, you have more lozenges. The first will be your time base in your scope display or frequency when you switch to a spectrum display. Your next lozenge is your trigger settings. From here you can select from a number of trigger types and adjust your trigger settings to display your waveform within the graph. We'll go into more detail on this in a later episode of PicoByte. You can change the trigger threshold with these two buttons or by dragging the trigger cursor on the screen. Next along is the waveform navigator, showing you a buffer of saved waveforms and onboard memory. On the 5000 series and the selection of other FlexRes PicoScopes, the next lozenge will allow you to adjust hardware resolution. This will improve the detail of the waveform at the cost of your sampling speed. Most PicoScopes are 8-bit as standard and it's usually more than enough detail for most applications. The next section is your utilities area. This section includes all your favorite utilities such as the instruments, saving and more. The instruments button allows you to change between time-based scope display and a frequency-based spectrum display. If you're watching this after the PicoScope 7 stable release, you'll have access to the XY display mode. Auto setup is your super lazy way to set up the scope. When you press this button, your PicoScope will look at your waveform and work out the best voltage range and time scale to display your waveform. You then have a variety of buttons to allow you to save and load your waveform settings in various formats. These include PS data formats or CSV. This allows you to record the files and send them to your colleagues or friends. You can also print out your screen and stick them to your fridge if you fancy. And last but not least, in your utilities area, you have the full screen button. And this will allow you to set your waveform to your whole display, or you can simply just press F11. Now you have a bite-sized introduction to PicoScope 7, this will give you a good starting point into using your interface and getting the most out of your PicoScope. For more information, be sure to check out your PicoScope manual and there's plenty of information online and on our YouTube. Be sure to keep an eye out for our next episode of PicoBite for your next monthly top tip.